The MDR stands for moving diariometer. It's one of the most common instruments in a rubber lab and it gives us a cure curve. Torque versus time as rubber vulcanizes under heat. But here's the practical question that comes up all the time. Based on the MDR cure curve, how do you know how long to vulcanize your samples in the press? That's the kind of real-world decision we are going to unpack today. On the MDR curve, you will typically see a starting point called the minimum torque. That reflects the viscosity of the uncured rubber. Then, as crosslinking kicks in, the torque rises and eventually you reach what we call T90. That's the time to reach 90% of the total torque increase, essentially 90% of the cure. Some labs also talk about T95, depending on how conservative they want to be. These times are calculated automatically by the rheometer software, but here's the catch. The cure time in the press is never exactly the same as the T90 in the rheometer. Why not? Because the rheometer chamber has a very thin sample and highly controlled heating. The press, on the other hand, has thick mold cavities, variable heating, and real-world conditions. So you need a correction factor. A good rule of thumb is to take the T90 from the MDR and add about 20 to 30% to account for heat transfer into the bulk of the part. So if your MDR says T90 is 8 minutes, you would probably start with 10 minutes in the press. But this correction isn't universal. It depends on the thickness of the part, the press efficiency, and even the specific rubber formulation. And speaking of thickness, let's get really clear on this point. When we talk about correcting for cure time, we are usually curing samples in the lab press for testing. The thickness of the sample has a direct impact on how long it takes for heat to penetrate through and cure the entire piece. A practical way to think about it is that for each additional millimeter of thickness, you add some extra time to the cure. A common rule of thumb is to add about 30 seconds to 1 minute of cure time for each extra millimeter of thickness. For example, tensile test sheets are usually around 2 millimeters thick, so they cure relatively quickly. But samples for the Matia testing are about 6 millimeters thick which means you might need to add an extra 2 to 4 minutes compared to the base T90 values to make sure the heat reaches the core. If you only use the base T90 without considering thickness, you risk having undercured centers in your thicker samples. So, when you are setting press times in the lab, always consider both the MDR curve and the actual thickness of the test piece you are molding. 